do 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 uh, Hello, hi, sorry, I'm extremely confused for uh, a couple of seconds. Uh, I'm trying to work out where the link is to my own stream, and I have no idea. Um, I suppose I just... How do I even get to my own stream? I don't even know. Um, I suppose I just go through my channel, I guess. Uh, let's see. Sorry for um, ridiculous... Oh, no, you have to... Oh, it's ridiculous. I'm just going to jump over at screen, actually. Yeah, bear with me. First ten minutes of the stream is never really real. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I also need to set Streamlabs up. Oh no, it is set up. It's just extremely small. Damn it. So you can look at all this stuff on the dashboard, but look how tiny that text is. That's ridiculous. All right, let me sort that out now. Uh, apologies for any bumps on the table. You can see my solution for dampening that at the second, which is changing in a couple of days' time. I have got something to sort that out in the form of a um, uh, mic stand boom arm thing. Uh, and I'm hoping to attach it to, actually, uh, what do I want to do? I want to look at the mobile. I've also got a stream deck here, which is fantastic. So I can do stuff like this. Uh, I'm thinking of attaching it to this part of the... Um, of the shelf and it means then that my audio solution is completely isolated from my sort of work area which is what you want at the moment i've got a really bad solution of this mess and this camera looks blurry as hell and it's a lone frame rate and for some reason the mobile one seems to be smoother does it i don't know it looks like that to me anyway so that's that uh, i literally can't read anything at the moment um uh, because I can't see it because it's too small. I'm trying to keep everything in one so I have one window so I can see stuff um, and I will be able to read it in a second. So bear with me as I increase the font size uh, to something perhaps more reasonable. That's still unreasonable. Oh, come on. I was hoping it would kind of fill the space. And why is it stretched? Oh, no. Oh, this has gone really bad. Right, let's see. Um, height, width, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why is it so stretched? I don't know. I have no idea. Hmm. Is it cropped? I have no idea. And I think it's just decided to shut down. I'll see if I can get that fixed. Uh, let me just get some chat though for now and I'll see what I can do about fixing that uh, meanwhile. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Chat, 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 chat. My own stream link. Oh wow, that's that's a very complicated stream link. Why is that so bad? Anyway, how's everyone doing? Um, yeah, I am obviously as every single time I try and do this, um, completely inept. Um, enable custom. Does that actually just wanna? Does it just wanna work? Let me see if I can copy the Earl. I'll repaste it and see if that has any effect. And that should show up, but I'm not sure why it's not. Um, actually, there's a there's a there's a ticket. Let's have a look at this. Let's see. Um, transform, edit, transform. Hmm. Well, for the first thing, I need to get the damn thing back. So I have absolutely no idea what's going on there. Uh, I don't know why it's just decided to shut down. Let's see, launch. Not unless the stream has decided to block it for some reason, but I have no idea why that would be the case. Anyway, one thing I'm planning to do in this uh, stream is sort this thing out, hopefully get it fixed. If we can, that's great. If not, then we won't bother. Um, but yeah, I, I have a feeling that I'm, what I'm going to do is run it through uh, Prime 95 and see if that works, but obviously for this, I'm going to need to probably do something like, before I type in my password, um, change to something a little bit more appropriate. But I'm still used to using the, the, the um, 
so used to using the the monitor uh, the monitor yeah the sort of monitor control over using the stream deck at the moment because this is the first time using the thing um so i will see if i can i don't know get a little bit more savvy if i hit that up there there we go that makes a bit more sense i think that worked fantastic okay so what i can do then is i'm going to be flipping back and forth between all these things um and what i can do is that which is quite cool i think so now i've got eyes on everything which should be quite cool and i've even got a um a bit of a more complicated one which does monitor mobile and desk which is a bit crazy but we might get into that at another time um so yeah freaking lights are really hot today so i'm absolutely sweltering at the moment um so yeah i should be okay as we go I, do, I did try to update the layout a little bit. I've spent quite a lot of time this week doing more sort of thinking and trial and error with this stuff than I have anything else, to be honest, because um, I wanted to upgrade this a little bit. I have got a, I've got a break sort of um, video thing set up as well. So if I go for a quick break, then that'll be okay. Uh, one thing I'm not sure though is whether chat is working. If someone just pings me a message on chat and see if that works okay. Um, I'm pretty sure anybody on Discord will be able to... Oh yeah. Oh, so that's my link. Copy link address. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Paste that into general on there. People can go there. I really need to sort out the uh, the thing as well, the uh, live stream thumbnail thing, because that's really bad. Um, so yes, let me see what I can do now, because I am... Okay, so that is working. But it's just really bad for some reason chatbox why is chatbox so damn bad if i just switch back as well oh so ah, oh, so when you're not on a studio mode that's really routine so let me see if i can uh, sort this stuff out oh it's a little trial and error again the first 10 minutes or so of a stream is really just absolute balls so um, i'm actually gonna see if i can fix this momentarily um, or of course, doing it this way means that everything will look like absolute crap until I've actually sorted the thing out. And everything's going to disappear until things get fixed. Oh, it's going to be awful. Um, so yeah, so if I've got myself... So yeah, why the hell is it not working to begin with? Because one thing that I don't think I've been able to do is actually do a test on this thing, which is annoying, but we'll see. Um, what I might do, I suppose what we can do is just deal with it for now and I'll try and sort of fix it later or something or in my own time. Yeah, what I could do is delete it and try reset it, maybe, but I don't know. Okay, first things first is I'm going to set uh, priority 5 to run on here uh, and I, what I will do is throw the brightness on that screen up so you can actually see things. Uh, I haven't got a fancy link through to it with an HDMI cable out into a box into the you know capture card and stuff like that. Um, so instead we're just going to have to run old school as it were and uh, and see if this works this way. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to run priority 5 on here. I'm just going to log some very, very basic statistics down such as, um, I don't know, um, temperatures on cores and stuff. And uh, let's see if MSI afterburner will pop up. There you go. Let's see how that goes. Do, 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 do. And I, uh, it's a funny thing is I'm actually running out of screen real estate now. This is really irritating. Let's see if I can crunch that across. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted to do at all. There we go. Okay. Oh. So, 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 so. I'm actually completely run out of screen real estate. I'm not sure if you can see my dilemma here. Uh, if I go to my uh, build camera, if I slot that up, you'll be able to see. Oh, it's a mess in the background. Apologies for that. Um, but I've sort of got, um, I've got the OBS over here. I've got this Excel document here. I've got this chat I need to throw somewhere. I've got the live dashboard there to see if everything's going okay with the YouTube end. And then I've got MSI Afterburner on there, which I don't really need, but it's nice to have because that's my sort of monitor area thing that I've got set up. So if I want to perhaps do, I don't know, I don't know something over there with the monitor, then it's free and available for me to use it. But I suppose what I can do is throw the YouTube thing on there and I'll just throw chat on there and we'll hopefully deal with it that way. Oh, geez. Okay, okay, everything is kind of working. So, um, yeah, whatever, no, I don't need that. So, uh, GPU temperatures, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Oh, that doesn't snap as well. Ah, oh. all these problems and more. So yeah, so one thing that I was kind of looking to do with this stream a little bit was sort of discuss 
stuff to come up on the channel a little bit. If anyone has any sort of right, you need to thought, you know, you need to review this or whatever, then that'll be absolutely fine. I can log this stuff down. Um, that I did not know that did that. Did anyone know that MSI Afterburner, the thing in the top right hand corner, actually took you directly to MSI? That's really strange. There's that logo in the top there. I'm not sure if anybody if anybody really cared about that. There's a logo up there, and it's actually a button. If you click it, it takes you to MSI's page. Didn't know that before. Okay. So we'll log down. Um, I'm going to throw, actually, let's go to... Uh, I'll go into studio mode just to make sure I'm not ballsing things up a little bit. Um, okay, actually, there's a thought. Does everything look okay on there? I don't know. I don't think the streams, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but we'll just see. So what I'm going to do is throw on the monitor side of things, I'm going to throw up this, oh come on, extra painful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is throw that into there and see if that works that way. Okay, things should be so much snappier than this, but they're not for obvious reasons. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll throw the monitor on there so we can see what I'm doing in, in that regard. And in fact, we can even throw monitor and desk on so you can see the desk as well, which is always nice. So I'm, like, I'm going to slightly move the mic, so sorry if that makes a noise for anybody, but so I can actually see what I'm doing. It's just not enough screen, screen real estate. So I'm thinking measurements. Actually, I kind of can't be bothered doing it this way. I'm going to do it a little bit, a little bit more of a smarter way, if that's, you know, a thing. Right, let's see. Let's go on to ongoing projects. Let's see. Uh, video folder template. And let's take the thermal testing sheet to the desktop. And then we can open that. So instead, I'm just going to throw this on here. And you should be able to see that. There you go. So this is like my sort of standard testing stuff piece of, you know, um, I don't know, Excel where, if you can call it out. Um, but yeah, this basically just, um, what, is the Streamlabs thing working now? Uh, is that working now? Chat box? Uh, no. I... Live. Does that work now? I don't know. Uh, looks fine. It's probably because I just thrown the exposure on way too high. So the problem is, is that's half the time I'm using um, OB, uh, half the time I'm using um, Flux. That's just reducing the brightness. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll leave it like that for now. Sorry, the things are stretched and weird. It's that's really irritating me. Um, what I might try and do is actually reduce the width down uh, and see if it's okay. Oh, the chat looks fine, does it? Is it my screen that makes it look weird then? It looks a bit tall, and every single time I have to reset the crap on there, it just completely throws the chat out. I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'll let the chat do its thing, um, the chat box do its thing, and we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so this is the basic um, thing that I use to lock down temperatures. Um, so I've just got basically all the Pranic 5 stuff. This is pretty much dead stuff. It has some information over here, but it's very irrelevant. And this information here is only, only relevant for if I want to make a quick... Um, some sort of quick graph. I don't use this as the paste out graph. Um, oh, yours isn't at all. It's just my screen then. My monitor's making things look eh, a little bit stretched for some reason. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so this, I don't really use this. I throw it into um, a PowerPoint document thing, which is here. And if I say have, um, let's have a look at air cool stuff. Uh, update all the links and it'll tick along in the bottom right. Uh, but yeah, okay, and I also need to resize it because the window I've got is a weird size. So anyway, this is how I log things down, and it links through to the to the separate folders I use. Um, but all of the stuff, uh, nope, don't say that. All the stuff here is dead stuff. This is all dead information in the sense that um, that it doesn't link to anything. I do all the testing here, and then I manually link, manually link it through to the you know the air cooled um, Excel document, which then links through to a PowerPoint thing, which I can right click and PNG slides out. So then we have the results that you see in videos. Um, so what I'm just going to do is use this, um, and I'll just save this as uh, do, 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 do. let's throw it here, uh, and we'll do laptop test. 
um, and I missed the M. Okay, laptop thermal testing. So cool. So what I'm gonna do is just knock down um, frames per second. That's for um, MS. Uh, that's for Fermark. So okay, so we've got the, the thing here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go on to the build desk thing there, and I will hit the uh, Pro 95. And there you go. I'm just gonna do for Pro 95 because it's it's not onboard graphics. Um, it's just. It's not yeah, it's not onboard graphics. It has got a dedicated card. Uh, in fact, actually, no. Why not? Why don't we just throw the? Um, have we got combustor on here? I'll see if I can down download combustor very quickly. Uh, and if not, then we'll just live without. Yeah, combustor's not on here. So um, uh, combustor, and we'll see if that comes up. Have to burn a combustor. Okay. Got to find the right link now. One that isn't gonna. Jam the laptop with spam. Okay. So, question, question. What is all that about? Affiliate revenue. I don't know. Um, no. Um, question. One thing I actually want to ask you guys is how did, if you saw the rapid review um, new format thing we're doing, how did that come across for you guys? Because um, there's a little bit of feedback on the page. I'm just wondering if anybody saw it, um, saw it themselves live. Or live, um, or have seen it themselves, and you know if if you have any sort of I don't know, um, any ideas as it were as to how you how you thought it was. Uh, combustor downloads. I just want combustor. Hopefully, it's just downloads combustor. Um, yeah, two point six, three point. Oh, no, the other one is for uh, thirty two bit. Um, okay. That seems to be legit. So 20 seconds or so will be okay. Um, so yeah, because I, th I threw that video together in a matter of, I don't know, a few nights. And then I spent time doing the logo. And I spent time setting up stuff for potentially a stream thing. So you can see that the branding of this stream is a rapid review stream, which is not a rapid review stream. This is just testing the format or the idea. Uh, this is not nothing to do with a rapid review um, format at all. And nothing to do with the videos. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the only stream thing I could bash together in you know in a sort of relatively short time um so yeah so hence why it's labeled the way it is uh, I've got the YouTube Patreon Discord Twitch Facebook and Twitter things on there logos there just you know so people have a rough idea of, of ways to contact or get in touch um so yeah but yeah one thing I actually need to do is I am going to be doing um based on what the sickness was saying um, I am going to be doing some sort of sort of year-end wrap-up of the reviews. Uh, so I do want to have a little look into, or just have a little look over, a little, um, um, I don't know, reflection on the year and what I've reviewed. Obviously, well, in fact, obviously mostly all the stuff that I've covered is not exactly new stuff. It's kind of old stuff. It's not, it's nothing that um, anyone hasn't really seen before in a different um, sort of video. Uh, but yeah, hopefully coming into the next year then, things will be a little bit more um, modern, a little bit more fresh, you know, newer components and stuff like that. I'm going to try and stay on top of things uh, and again, throw in some more formats that are a little bit more um, relevant, I'd say, to most people. So let's see, does MSI Afterburner now have to burn have? I'm going to have to shut it down first. But yeah, this laptop has got extremely sluggish. And I have got it on battery saving mode right now because I don't want the um, CPU to decide to kick in and make a big fuss for no reason, uh, which is the state I'm, I'm in now. So what I'm going to do is throw it onto the balanced setup and then we can do the test. Um, so yeah, so combustor's now shown up. Uh, so now we need to have Pro95 here. So we've got Pro95. We'll do small FFTS or small FFTs. Uh, I, always, I used to say TS way too much. I used to say it all the time in videos. So I'm going to throw a timer on my I'll throw a 10 minute timer on it I don't think we're gonna make it to 10 minutes frankly I'm gonna make it to five because I frankly I've, I think the further we push it the more damage we're likely gonna do to this whole thing so we'll just see how we do with five and see what happens uh, I have a feeling GPU what we got we got GPU GPU usage GPU core clock uh, CPU temperature CPU usage CPU clock and the RAM we don't really need the RAM um, but we'll just use that for now. So I'm gonna throw combustor on and no doubt Pro95 is gonna drop. Actually, I haven't even turned the battery situation over. Right, canceling combustor, 
Let's sort the battery out. Power options. Okay, balanced, and that's turned down to low. So there you go, throw that up. So Prime 95, let's see, combustor. Really, it's not allowing me to see MS Afterburner. Why is it doing that? Uh, okay, so combustor is going on now. And Prime 95, small FFTs, go. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna have a burny, smoky pile of hell. So what I'll do is I'll change over to the mobile with a desk slider, and you can see the laptop melt. It'd also be nice if it went into focus, and I'll try and sort that out now. Uh, let's see, focus value, uh, identify. We want this one. And you're going to hear some noise as well. Okay, there you go. That's a little bit more in focus. Uh, I can bring the exposure down a little bit so you get a little bit more information. Okay, not great exposure, but yeah. It's what I could do in the time. Let's we'll move things slightly over so we can actually see stuff. Yeah, that fan. So at the at the moment, where GPU usage is ninety nine percent. Although what I need to do is actually go straight to the not the monitor, no, the build mobile. So you can see here. So GPU usage is over at ninety nine percent, and its temperature is ninety degrees, which is hot. And this is it with the laptop flat on the desk. Uh, and then we've got so the core clock of the GPU, which is just some. I think it's a nine. 40 or 950M, um, it's a it's a 1097, if that means anything to anyone, but it, because of the graphics card it is, it's not exactly comparable to you know anything desktop style. CPU temperature is 98 degrees, uh, and the core and the clock has gone down to 14, 1500 megahertz. So clearly this is just, I mean, with two minutes in, which is just awful, awful on every level. Let's see if I can bring the uh, noise down on that so yeah so I'm doing my best not to cover any of the ports um, but yeah we'll just see how it goes over the next minute or so two minutes 45 to be exact ah oh. actually there's one thing um, what I have done uh, actually yesterday I ordered I ordered a boom for the um, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, throttling. What are we down to? 1397 on the core clock, which is, or well, CPU clock, not the core clock, that's GPU. GPU seems to be fine, fine at 92 degrees, which is not great. Um, but I think five minutes is all we need to test to actually validate how bad this is going to get. Um, I mean, at what point does a 3.5 gigahertz... CPU decide I'm out of here and just completely shut the system down. We might find out. We might find out This is what I used to stream on this used to be the streaming thing and on that note actually I'm still yet to set up and we'll just very temporarily zoom back here I'm still yet to set up that and because it's all Out of exposure because I'm looking at I've set it up for the screen You can not really see much, but that is my old 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 system and that is the um, What is it? It's a uh, uh, i7-950, I think. It's a first gen, uh, but it's still got like 3.01 gigahertz or 3 gigahertz on the on the core um, at at sort of its stock temperature or stock um uh, stock uh, frequency. So that's pretty solid still, and it's got 12 gigs of RAM, so it's got the RAM to drive it. Okay, so what we got a minute and one second left. Uh, we are at 97. Yeah, that's just thermal throttling all the way. Uh, it seems to stabilize around the 1397 megahertz. So, yeah, 14, well, you know, 1.4 gigahertz for a, what was that, original 3.5 gigahertz processor. So it's taken two thirds off its speed. So that's no good. Um, yeah. GPU is okay at 91 now, so that's you know that's okay. Um, obviously, we're gonna check the thermal solutions all round, and you know, 
see what everything's um, what everything's doing. So we're going to want to get the um, uh, let's go. We want monitor and so I can do monitor desk and mobile. Uh, it's crazy, right? Okay. So what we need to do, what I need to do, is actually reach over this. I'll end up just right clicking and pausing the MSI afterburner uh, just to see what we've got. Oh, it went down to thirteen hundred. So it went down to twelve ninety seven. So yeah, this is okay. So we'll pause that, and we're gonna we'll stop the combustor because it's the easiest one to stop. And there you go. So everything's stopped. So I'm gonna we're gonna see it just drop now. So let's see mobile. So everything's dropping down now. So it's it's gone back up to well, it's, when it did see. 3.5 gigahertz, but it's at 2.5 gigahertz, which I think is its base. I can't remember what this processor does, but I think it's its base and the CPU temperature is coming down 64 degrees, so it's dropping off pretty rapidly. Um, but yeah, I mean, there may not be a thermal problem, but um, there, I do feel there is because I'm just sort of sitting on the laptop randomly and you'll hear the fans kick in and it's really irritating when they do kick in because it'll all of a sudden just go, you know, extremely hot for virtually no reason. What is annoying is because this is a laptop and generally it has some sort of proprietary um, fan curve setup that you can't really tamper with too much unless you want to tap around with speed fan or something. Um, yeah, that is slightly irritating. So, so I need to slot that back. Uh, I'll go back to the desk and put this over here and I'm just going to throw the camera settings on that on auto. Uh, so focus and yep, checkbox good, checkbox. Okay, cool. So that's back. Um, but yeah, that there, you see here, is I'm temporarily using this for this purpose because it does a really freaking good job. Um, but this here is actually intended for an upcoming project. This is probably it's got like two slots, two different slots on there. It's actually got this sort of really cool um, sort of Allen key sort of square hex things. Anyway, but yeah, this is going to be something that I'm going to be utilizing uh, in the future for some sort of build which will be quite cool. I'm looking forward to doing that. So what we need to do is make sure I pause those. One great thing about Afterburner, uh, if you're not sort of using it all that much or if you don't really use it that much, um, it'd be nice if they had a different system set up to do this, but you can literally just drag the slider way across and just see the history of what's happened previously. So it's not just stretching and, and sort of compressing what you've sort of got on the screen. You do actually see everything. So I've paused it and you can see all the choppiness coming down uh, as the GPU is trying to figure out what it's doing and all the graphics and stuff. Anyway, uh, and the CPU is trying to work out its temperatures. Anyway, so we're going to log down these temperatures. So, um, so we had, and I can't be bothered doing three tests of this. So what we're going to do is pop back to the uh, monitor desk and thing there so I can well, I can shut that down for a second so we need so frames per second we just weren't logging down because um, that's actually just a copy and a graphic copy so I don't really do FPS for combustor um, so CPU temperature we were logged down as well that's 99 there's there's no getting around it that was 99 GPU temperature came out as uh, 91 which is, you know, what it is. Uh, ambient temperature. I need to get ambient temperature. Actually, you can't even be bothered doing ambient temperature. Let's see. Um, 23.1 degrees. And I know I did this completely wrong because you're supposed to double check everything exactly when the test ends and lock down the exact figure. But, you know, for this, for the purpose of this, not really bothered. CPU clock. Um, yeah, that's one thing I need to say is hello Toto Geenan, hello um, John Pro Games 360, hello Sickness, uh, and hello the other uh, couple of few people that are in uh, on the video. Um, okay, so CPU clock, we were looking at. Now, if we see if, if we'll go with his worst figure that we that came out, is I mean it was 1197, so that's not very good. 1.197 gigahertz, which that's not very good. Um, and then the GPU came out as 1.058. And that was not that. So 58. Okay. So that's what we've got to start with. Um, so that gives us a delta T then of 75.9 of and 67.9. So that is is what it is. We'll see what, what happens with that afterwards. 
Um, so if I if I'm just going to log that down as uh, run before, and then I'll do a run after, and that'll you know. So what we can do now is actually, and there is a shortcut on this laptop. If I hit uh, function and one, it will cool things down a little bit more. I want to make sure everything's quite cool for, sorry for the bumping as well. I want to make sure everything's quite cool before we jump into it uh, and really cool it down. So what I can do is just flip that over. I've got a setup so the monitor only uh, puts the... Uh, oh, the laptop only puts the monitor to sleep when the lid's shut, not the system. The system stays running. Uh, I did that a few times uh, when I was actually out and about uh, to charge phones and stuff while that was happening. But you can put it to sleep and that sort of thing. But I was um, sort of understanding how the laptop worked um, with its sort of uh, USB settings. Obviously, you can change it in the power stuff, but some things get weird when you know mess around and stuff. So I just left it on with the laptop off. And there's some blue tack there, which is no good. So anyway, that's cool enough. Wish your PC had what? Oh, the the do you mean the the, the stream deck or the um something? Okay. So we're down to forty two degrees on the CPU and what are we at the GPU? Forty GPU's losing temperature reading constantly, which is not very good. But down to forty two on that. So we're gonna shut this thing down. And we're going to break the thing open and find out what the source of the ticking noise is. So we don't need that. And now we wait. Oh, I'll go on to build. For now. Okay, so that's off. And I should have anti-static wrist straps and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what I'll do actually is I'll go um, main mobile and then secondary on the desk. And cause all sorts of people all sorts of problems by moving this while it's on there, which is not good, but it is what it is. Uh, and I'm also going to sort the exposure time out myself and the focus. Because it'll just go nuts. Oh, oh, you mean the um you mean the um the fan thing. Yeah, that's a really useful tool. I quite like that myself. So uh, let's strip this thing apart. First things first, take the battery out. Make sure I don't really zap it. Sorry my hand is so overexposed. Uh, eh. There you go. So, that's that. Actually, I swear that had a battery indicator on it before you click it, but I think that might have been another um, laptop. Yeah, you clicked it and it gave you a battery readout exactly how much was in it. Anyway, uh, so that's that. Uh, I'm just going to go ham on trying to find all of these different screws. Let's see how it goes. I'll back out a little bit for now. And there you go. Oh yeah, I did bring an organization box and the exposure's way out. I really apologize for that. There you go. I did bring an, or bring an organization box with me. This was from the Fantex and to evolve micro ATX system that I did like my first actual build on in this uh, on this channel. One thing I'm actually really quite excited about is the, and it's the strangest things, and I'm the saddest person for it, uh, but, uh, but today I have been setting up in my editor something for a break. And what I've done is I've compiled all the B-roll. I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but I've compiled all the B-roll um, and I haven't finished doing them all yet. But of all of my, my favorite ones, the ones I like the most of from videos from the past, uh, and I've put them into their own sort of little B-roll videos. I've compiled it into a repository or a folder, um, or you know, repository. That's what programs refer to them as sometimes for repositories. And I have, um, blah, 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 blah. I've, I've compiled them into that. Oh, there's that the solution. That's cool. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, and I've thrown it into a folder which is designed so that OBS can take that folder and just randomly shuffle and loop videos. So if I need to go off for, I don't know, uh, five minutes or so for one reason or another, uh, then I can play that. And you'll be able to see all the B-roll from all the videos going way back. And you can actually see then some of the not so, you know, nice B-roll, but then some of the better ones, they're all in there. Um, and yeah, I mean, even some of the more recent ones aren't so good. So what it looks like we've got here and I'd be buggered if I could tell out which one's which, is 
the cooling solution is very small and it does look easy to get at very good point um so it's just a fan with a radiator here which we'll just swap around here so there you go that's the radiator there i mean imagine if you've seen some of the radiators you've got on heat sinks and things like that in your system i mean we're looking at like that up there this entire block here that goes back for 140 millimeters this one here is really not very deep at all considering it's trying to cool both the cpu and the gpu but they are mobile processors and it's not like uh, it's dealing with anything too difficult so there you go so that's the heatsink there i did actually bring a measuring tape so we have got about two and a half centimeters of radiator space not sure if you can make that out it's about two and a half centimeters of radiator space uh, by eight and then it's only about i don't know two centimeters deep at most one and a half centimeters deep on average so com compare that to your 92 millimeter by 92 millimeter by 140 millimeter um radiator that's a radiator it's a heat sink but you could classify it as a radiator since it's got this uh um uh, the heat pipes going through, which have a liquid, so maybe, maybe. Um, but essentially, it is it? I mean, a radiator is something that radiates. Um, and whether ne I wonder necessarily whether you call it a radiator because it has water in it. I don't know. But yeah. Um, so anyway, so let's, I guess, rip this out. Now I'm not sure what CPU and what GPU. I'm going to assume CPU is that. No, that's definitely CPU because it looks like it's got some sort of softy thing. But I don't know what I'm talking about. So we'll just see how it goes. I'll slant it. Uh, this way maybe is easiest for you guys to see and let's let's see there we go so okay I hope everybody's getting the 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 view that they would like um, everything's like a Phillips head one in here apart from those which are tiny but we don't have to access those um, but yeah this is the first time I'm, I've actually ripped this thing open it's got the very much instructions of one two three four but we're gonna do the very sensible thing of just loosening everything off equally and it helps that I'm covering it with my fat hands oh so it's got one two three four five six okay one two three four okay so I presume it means you want to take do you want to take those off first or you want to put them in first I wonder um but anyway warning please follow the screw number for to install or remove the heatsink Okay, that's cool. And then that says one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Please follow the screw number one through four to install and remove the heatsink. I guess it means that you go just everything on one, but I don't like the idea of that. It's not what I've been taught before, but to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if it was that way for one reason or another. And for all we know, I could be absolutely bricking this thing. Not by unscrolling a screw, but. Hmm. Um, and I haven't got any, uh, uh, any, um, something, 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 whatever. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. So this is lifting it by itself. I'm gonna put that down a bit because <laughs> I'm just so huddled over. Eh. Come on, there you go. But no, this is interesting because this is this is its own unit, and the copper sort of flexing by itself as its own thing. So I've got to be very careful with this. So I'm not um, not going ha too ham on one and not the other. But I'm following the instructions now. It seems to me that that is completely unscrewed now because the screws are jumping on the thread. So we'll go with then five, six, seven, evenly, because I'm scared of the white. This is genuinely quite interesting. Oh, this screwdriver is awesome as well. Okay, fine. So. And seven. 
Now the question is, what needs removing from this area, this area, to get at this? Now I'm going to assume, well, that looks relatively loose by itself. There's a screw that's been taken out of there that was holding it down to begin with. Now what's this all about? Let's see. I think it's Holyroll, but I know where some is. Okay, so that's shifting. Oh, so is that its completely own separate thing? Interesting. So I should be able to lift this now, and with any luck, if I have my plastic prying tool, is that just going to come out? I don't know. We'll see. Let's give everyone a better view. Because after all, me doing this on a camera. Okay. And mobile. Let's move that. Oh, so the chat box is only working on one screen at a time. Okay, so that's apologies for the lack of view. I'll put my hand around the other way. Okay, so that's that. So you can see in the build thing, that's our heat sink. Wow, that might be the source of the thermal problems. I'm no laptop expert, so this could be common practice. But to me, is that the CPU or is that the, oh, I cannot tell for the life of me. No idea. Right, anyway, I'm going to assume that's the CPU for some reason, but pop back to the... Check this out. And we're going to throw the uh, focus value way the hell down. And bring the exposure down. Apologies, 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 apologies. Look at that. I'm going to assume... Ooh, there you go. I'm going to assume that that is for the CPU. And it looks like the thermal paste is all dried up. Let me just double check things. Yeah, no, so yeah, um, Streamlabs is dead for some reason. I'll need to sort that out another time. Um, but yeah, it does work on the other, on the other screen. Uh, but yeah, it looks like that is all dried up entirely. But if we go over to go over to what it was sitting on, it looks like it's all dried up there as well. It doesn't look like there's much there at all. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, what we're going to do is basically wipe this off and just go completely fresh. Um, so I need to go back and sort out the focus time. Uh, exposure time needs to come up. Uh, to a certain level. The slider is like this long and I need to move it this much to get between what all the values you've been seeing. So it is horrible. It's not like I can do much more about that. And I'll show it throw the focus back onto auto and then turn it off. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's cool. So what I'll do is I'll clean this up now and I'll throw that to the side for now. That can go down there. That's interesting as hell then. Okay, let's see. If I can bring that over there. I can put that in a position that's, I guess, suitable. Do, 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 do. Focus. I would try and rely on Logitech to do the right thing and focus for me, but unfortunately, I can't rely on that. Streamlabs chat box. Why are you not doing things? That's so strange. Okay, you can all see the chat elsewhere. Um, but yeah. Okay, now it's... <laughs> No, it's destroyed everything now. Okay, that's annoying. Um, yeah, so Streamlabs, I need to sort that stuff out. I think it's probably me doing something wrong. But, uh, swappable CPU kind of looks like a fairly standard socket. Yeah, it did, didn't it? I assume that's the CPU. Um, no idea. Right, actually, I need to go get some... Bear with me. I need to get some spray and some... A little bit of toilet roll. And I'm running out, if you can hear this.
I'm running out of uh, the old electronics. Oh, there's a good thing that I have that I didn't um, capture immediately. Is the dust? Look at that! It's brilliant, isn't it? I'm not sure brilliant's the word. I'll rotate this so we have more light. Look at that dust. So that's probably got something to do with it. So if we remove the dust. That's just, there are better ways I could do this. I have a freaking random blower over there. Actually, I'm going to use the blowertron, whatever the hell thing's called. I'm going to mute the speaker though while it happens, so bear with me. I'm back. I'm a back. Okay, so that's yeah. That dust is awful. Um, yeah. So we'll just we'll let another Hoover deal with that. But yeah, I couldn't actually get some of these bits out for some reason. So I'll need to sort that out in a second. Um, see if I can find some sort of brush. See if I was more prepared, then this would be fine. But I'm not, so it's not. A, it's actually a, more a problem than it should be. Aha, I found some brushes, yeah. These are actually the brushes that came with the kit, which is pretty cool. So, uh, let's see. Uh, I just want to tell you that I always follow you because you're uh, very good, especially in the reviews. Uh, that has um, I'm sorry for my English, but I'm Italian. Eh, whatever. I appreciate I appreciate your uh, your support and uh, and saying that sort of stuff. It's really you know it is really good actually because it is what keeps the channel legitimately going because I can't I don't know can I, you I don't think I could carry on doing this knowing that there is a community of sorts that uh, again apologies for the freaking chat's not working um, but I don't think I don't think many people could do this knowing that there's a community that a community sort of vibe is possible. Um, let me see the mobile and desk as well. That a community vibe is possible, um, but they're not having a community to support them. I don't think that'd be possible. Did anyone get that? I don't know. Uh, right. So I'm just gonna brush all this stuff out and see if hopefully it all comes out relatively neatly. I think I'm just. That's just useless. Right. No, nope, forget it. Okay. Well, we got the ma majority of the crap out, so that's good. Um, so yes, all those are there. So. I mean, we could probably just pull the CPU out and just have a little look at that socket because, I mean, why the hell not? Um, okay, that's just the thing. It's just the tape telling you how to take it off. So, I'm going to bring the just the exposure. There you go. Actually, I tell you what I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do. I'm actually going to adjust my monitor just to see if the exposure's in check. I can see why you guys may have had problems all of us, <laughs> all, all all up to this point. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Okay, uh, but no, really appreciate the support, though, man. Uh, do, 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 do. Liquid metal laptop cooling. I really wish. I really wish. So let me just get rid of this. Get rid of that rubbish, and then we slide it along. And deal with this crap too. Not the anti-static way of dealing with this, but I don't mind. If I wanted a professional to do this, I'd send it to a professional. I can see why that why you, uh, that camera is also a problem. Uh, let me see. Uh, do, 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 identify. There we go. And then bring the. That didn't do anything. I don't think I changed it. It's okay. Uh, it'll, it'll work. Right. Okay, let's see. Let's get some WD-40 crap on this thing. Eh? Somebody actually saw this WD-40 can and said, 
and said, WD-40, I've never seen that used, you know, on stuff. And I was like, no, don't use the normal WD-40. That'll, you'll brick your system. Um, use this stuff, the specialist stuff. I only bought this because it was cheap. It's like, it's like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Just get isopropyl alcohol. I was like, no, I do understand that, but... Okay. Really running out now. Really running out now. Lithium grease. Okay. I mean, that's seen some action there. Look at that. Like it's scorched. It's probably not. I don't know. I don't know what that is actually. Some sort of discoloration. I'm not going to get too worried about it. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Well, that's gone quite well so far. I think we can. Throw it back in. But let's check out that CPU though, because I'm interested in that as well. Since I think Toto Geenan mentioned that looks like a uh whatever, and I was like, yeah. Okay, put that there. Do my best not to create a crotch cam situation. Oh, there's hairs and crap in there as well. Alright, I'll just clear that out myself. Nobody needs to see the crap that's gone through my laptop. Uh okay, that's good. So, we also need to clean this up too, but we'll do a quick clean of it, and then we'll sort out. You know what, it's close to you guys if I switch it the way around. Do, do, do. So, what, live streaming, to a certain degree, is definitely more... I don't know, uh, it's not... I think it's definitely more difficult because there's a lot of problems and it's very difficult to... Uh, to maintain a, um, I don't know, a constant stream of quality, as it were. But, I mean, overall, it is quite, it is quite fun to just in interact live. Problem is, though, is I forget a million things that I wanted to talk about. Sorry, I'm just ju adjusting the, um, the exposure. Uh, I just forget a million and one things that I want to discuss uh, in the live stream. And I should write these things down. Okay, so we'll just throw, and just so I'm not splashing it everywhere, I'm just going to throw that there. Actually, I'll do a quick. Why am I doing this backwards? Why do I do things backwards? I wonder if we can actually make out the coding on this. There you go. I've got cotton wool buds. Which I would use, but genuinely I find that kitchen paper does or toilet paper does quite a, quite a good a good job. Budget for Ryzen. Oh boy, I ripped the paper. Um, I want Ryzen. I actually saw I actually th uh, saw um Threadripper was something like three hundred pounds. For a uh, like the nineteen twenty or something, I'm probably getting it wrong. No, it's nineteen fifty is like the highest one on them. But yeah, 90, I think it was nineteen twenty X was like three hundred quid. It's a twelve core. And I, I looked at it. I thought, ooh, is that? Another, I think that's six. Is that six true cores, twelve threads? I don't know. Not super. Not super up on these things. I just saw. I just see passing. You know, either videos and or right. I'm just gonna do a quick shield. And NVIDIA Shield. Okay, well. Would this just get out bleeding can? Wow, okay. Well, you'll be able to see it up here. But I'm going to need to spray this like this because it's not working any way. Okay, good. Oh, I bashed the camera. Okay, right. Now we need a new piece of toilet paper, because otherwise things get very messy. Hope you can all see that. There you go. See the NVIDIA logo. There. I know, I used to use my finger. Oh. 
And then you do another round of that. What's that noise? No idea. You know why I have a face cam during these things? Because I'm never looking at the camera. Okay. Okay. So that's definitely the GPU. No doubt about it. So this then is obviously a CPU. So we'll do a quick cleanup of it and see how it goes. So, do 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 do. What's everybody chatting about? Just wanted to know. Just want to know. What, no, no. Um, oh, the sickness mentioned software CPU. So, yes. Correct. Uh, didn't Linus make a video on using a laptop CPU on a desktop motherboard? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, talk about buying um, now seven people see bad type typing. Oh, more than seven. I mean, Discord sees it all the time. It's actually one of those. It's actually a, a rare quality, and I'm not. I'm not actually ripping on you at all. Um, it's actually a rare quality to see um people actually well one care about the way they type, uh, or um two they just actually type correctly. Um, it's yeah. So many people just decide just because they're on the internet. They don't care, um, which is, you know, and that's not ripping on you at all. Um, but there's so many people that just don't care and they just write any old dribble. And you think, did you, after you just splatted your hands all over the keyboard, not just check what you wrote to make sure it made sense? Um, yeah. Ooh. Well, that's coming off lovely. Yeah, I have a feeling that the thermal paste just completely dried up on this thing. Wow, okay. Not sure if you can see that. But that is solid thermal paste there. Ugh. Left to left, right, right to left. That is just solid thermal paste. And it's not... And, and I know, it's, I have to manually focus this stuff. It is on manual focus still. There you go. That is solid thermal paste. It's a... Ah. Oh. So that's how much it's dried up in here. So that was definitely... Uh, some of the problem, if not the entire problem. See that this is autofocus. But awful. You don't even get regions as to why you can do stuff. Um, that's why I took my phone for to correction. Yeah, not a bad way to go. Um, is big voice to clean thermal paste? Does that work? Because that's. I mean, I'm not sure if there's there's stuff in you know the the solution uh, that comes with baby wipes that could be a problem, and I can imagine there could be. Um, but then again, like you know, weirder things have happened for cleaning off thermal paste. I mean, you've seen like the pile of stuff like people do videos. I think I know Lars Tech Tips did one, and um, I think Jay's Two Cents did one, and he's um, on you know just using random stuff like Windex and stuff like that to clean off um, thermal paste and stuff like that. So I mean, it's not like baby wipes couldn't work. I just wonder if there's anything potentially in there that's like specifically hazardous. Potentially. But again, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I presume it's completely fine. Right, I'm just going to do a, the old. Oh, and it's got a screw. Ah, I'm going to have to get my, um, my set of something or others. No. No, that doesn't sound right. Um, uh, star keys. Okay. Well, that was a good sound. It's amazing how shiny they get these things. Because, I mean, you look at your um, your CPU, um, your standard like desktop CPU, and it looks like it's all sort of matte finish, but it is incredible. I mean, look how... And you can see my ear. Uh, I'm trying to... Oh, never going to hear this. Oh, you can see my ear there and it looks like it's in focus as well which is fantastic but it's amazing how shiny you get these things even the nvidia one it's just fantastic isn't it um and yet yet the ones on that i wonder if i don't know i wonder if there's obviously a problem in terms of um the, the accessibility to it now that's got some slight residue on it i'm making sure this is triple checking that all of this is absolutely perfect before we go ahead and rebuild the thing because damn i'm not coming back here i'm also going to blow the fan uh, out with air to make sure that it is as, as clean as it can be. Okay. 
There we go. But about an hour before the stream started, when I was setting up all of the um, the um, break stuff uh, for the on the stream deck and stuff like that, I realized I, I looked at the stream deck stuff and I was like, "Oh, there's a multi tool a multi tool function." So I decided, "Hmm, I wonder if I could combine the." Um, the microphone muting and the break function so that it turns into a break. I did, and it was fantastic. I can really see why Stream Deck is such a popular thing. I picked mine up, I think, for £80 on the um, on the uh, Black Friday sales, which was fantastic. And, um, and I can see why this is such a useful thing for streamers. But it makes you wonder, why hasn't this been done all that much before? And I haven't actually looked for them, but I assume there's going to be some uh, applications for iPads and stuff which makes this stuff possible. But the integration with the PC would be more difficult, I suppose. So yeah, it's interesting how that hasn't been done before, but obviously everything has to happen at some point, and obviously uh, now was that point. But it is really a fantastic piece of kit. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, do, 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 do. let's see. Uh, zip ties, air tweezers, oh, that was amazing. I uh, see, I don't, I don't read articles or watch videos from like, um, from, Big corporations or anything? Oh. Right, give me two seconds. Two seconds. Oh. Okay, I just muted and unmuted my mic. Uh, it's one of those things, you tell people you are streaming between the hours of seven and nine, and then people come and call you anyway. So, uh, anyway, what can you do? Right, so uh, I think we're gonna remove that CPU now because that'll be fun. Uh, I should have also got my uh, proper tool set for this. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There you go. I bought these on like, it was like a two for, like they were like two for, I don't know, seven pounds or something on these things, these talks. I think they're talks. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to assume it's going to be a very small one. Heh <laughs> heh. There's a joke there somewhere. Uh, okay, so talks. Oh, T9. Or is it a T10? I'm just going to double check. I'm just going to double check. Because I don't want to end up like... Nope, it was T9. Oh, first time, first time. Okay, cool. So, let's see how this goes. Now, how much do you need to unscrew it? Okay, it's only a half turn. So that's... Ooh, fancy. Now watch me break a pin on this and completely bugger the thing up. Okay, so now it's time for Super auto focus, uh, uh, manual focus. Oh, that was awful. Let's see if I can go even closer. Oh, well, now how close we can get. Whoa. Look at that. Rivaling Lewis Rossman. Maybe not. That's really cool. Damn it, I should use this stuff when I've got freaking pin problems on my motherboards. Yeah, PGA, right. And I just want to make sure I do, yeah. Okay, there is a triangle. The triangle is a dot in this corner, and there's a dot in the other corner as well. It is this way round, because I remember taking it off that way. But yeah, that's, that's interesting. Anyway, sorry. Look how cool that is, though. It's good fun, this stuff. Something I do like that. Yeah, but if I have a pin problem in the future, hell, I'm just going to start stream up and, and fix it that way. I mean, it's easier doing it like this. Obviously, I don't need to start stream up, but it's good fun. Anyway, I think that's enough of seeing that. That was quite fun. Go into an AMD motherboard. Well, I'll just, yeah, I'll just, um, I'll just take each pin and then just slightly reposition them to match up. Um, I'll just get the pile of Arduino wires and stuff. Like, if one has a male and one has a female, I'm pretty sure we can work it out. Okay. So. 
Happy or something, something more productive. That's it. I really, I, Lewis Rossman's awesome. I know he's very much, he's very much Marmite to a lot of people, but I think he's awesome. And now, this is so packed in with stuff, I want to replace it in a manner that isn't going to screw me and I'm going to drop it. I mean, I know these things aren't the weakest things in the world, but I want to make sure that I don't, like, tempt fate. Come on. There we go. So that's in place. Now I need to get the torques thing, and I presume I'm very lightly holding it with my finger there, not putting much pressure on it at all. Okay, back in place. All good. Okay. So now the question is, how much thermal paste do you put on these things? Not a lot. I mean, there's so much room around the package, it's not, not a problem. So we can just, you know, go ham. But, like, we're just going to want to have some sort of, like, relatively even spread around. But that's got so much over, over sort of spill area there. And that's got loads there as well that I really am not too bothered. Um, do, 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 do. There you go. Right. I was thinking of also buying more of Ar Arctic MX2. You can see on this that I'm down to, I mean, I've used of a 65 gram tube. Again, towards half. So I might buy some more Ar Arctic MX2, just because the last thing I want is for some reason Arctic either stops producing it or goes bust and they stop producing it somehow. And then I've got my, t my test thermal paste is then thrown out the window because, you know, I could try and replace it with something that is ex like very like for like, which is what I would do. I wouldn't reset the graphs again. Actually, I probably would reset the graphs. I've reset the graphs so many times. Ugh. Right. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do a small... Now, that is way more than enough. But better more than enough than not enough. So that's that much we're putting on there. Not unless somebody thinks that's not enough. And then I'll put some more. And then I'll put a stream across here. Now, at the very least, there's more than the word that there was the. Uh, I'll try again. At the very least, that was more than there was before. So. Does that seem like a reasonable amount to people? <laughs> yes, you idiot. Put it back on. Oh. Ah, what was that? It was the... It was the screwdriver all along. Oh, that's a... Look at that. That's, a that's just going to fall over. And it's going to cause all sorts of earaches for people trying to listen. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's the. I, yeah, I think we're all in the same boat here. I don't do laptop repair, and this isn't even laptop repair. This is sticking some thermal paste in a laptop. I actually know somebody that, um, that used to go to uh, high school, different year, but he used to go to high school with me. And he does laptop repair now, and he's, apparently he's a real wizard of the thing. Okay. So, triple checking everything. We have two clean thermal pads, or whatever you call them, heat spreaders. And we've got a clean, thin array, we'll call that. Uh, it's got a clean, thin array that is mostly clean. That stuff in there is frankly just looking like silver, silvery, but it, you can actually see... Oh, left is left, left is right, right is left. You can see all the way through. I'm just trying not to hit the camera. Oh, I'm the worst at this. Anyway, so that's clean. Everything is relatively fine. So what we're going to do is throw this back in, clamp it all down, and retest it. Don't 
double check chat now just in case someone says no that's not enough so balls now this is the awkward bit in fact why don't i see what's the point on doing a video just a golden rule of a video what is the point on doing a video when you don't show what the hell's going on in the video um we'll get there quickly put it back before it all dries out you you fool what did i do i don't know what i did ah Right, so we need to slot this thing in first. And then drop these into position. Now, does this seem okay? Did you get a new camera? I don't know. Maybe. No, I haven't got a new camera. Okay, that's in there. And that is in position. So, I don't know if there's specifically something. I mean, it says, and I know I'm doing it in. And this is something I do in every single screw I screw in. Counter screw. And then when you hear the do, you then screw in. It ensures you don't get cross threads. Unless you somehow catch it mid. I already did that one. Okay, those are done. Now we've got these screws here. Don't let them drop inside the laptop. That would be bad. Right, that's good. Okay, is everything okay? I think so. I barely had that in camera in shot. I apologize, but they all went in fine. Okay. This is such an interesting way of doing. Doing the uh, sort of hold down plate for the graphics card. Or the graphics chip, I guess. It just seems so strange. That's actually just okay. Not over tight, tight enough. I think we're okay. <laughs> Trying to free stuff. Um, did you get a new camera? Uh, is this the old laptop? New ca is it an old camera? Or is it a new laptop? Uh, it's an old camera and it's an old laptop. Oh. Uh, no, I don't know. If you're referring to this, this is the same one that I've always used. Right. I think we're okay. We've only got 8 gigs of RAM in this thing as well. I'm not going to upgrade it because I don't need it because that would be stupid. What's the point in upgrading if you don't need to? So that's that. I'm not missing anything now. I don't think I am. So let's put the panel back on and we will we'll retest this thing. And that is actually completely fine. It doesn't even need blowing out. So I'm not even going to bother. I've actually broken, bleh, broken many pins on this thing. No good. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Whew. Okay. Home stretch. 
Let's just magnet the thing. I need to get a magnetics parts tray. I was going to get a massive one, then I thought, and it cost 20 quid, and then I was like, hmm. I do need to get one now. I was going to do a stupid video where I literally buy, like, you know, five of the most popular magnetics parts trays, or the cheapest magnetic parts trays, and uh, do a video on that. But it's a magnetics parts tray. What's to go wrong with it? This one's magnet is not quite as strong as the other one's magnet. And anyone who does any review on text didn't show that. Don't need some guy doing a... Okay. There we go. Doing a video on it. Okay. Yeah, I gotta wait for fan spin. Wow, the unprofessionalism. I should have changed scene before I did this. But no. And we'll throw power on just for the sake of being, well, obviously consistent for testing purposes, but even for consistency in terms of loading. And I'll also just go when I need to do the um, typing in password. Wow, I shouldn't do that. Imagine someone watching this in VR, which they wouldn't do because this isn't virtual reality. Okay, so let's see. Let's, let's just hit the thing on. Everybody good? Okay, okay. I could. I had to actually replace that one because it went haywire on me, which was annoying. The first one went really freaking hot when I was cutting out a um, just a bit of hardboard out of the back of one of the things. It was the first time I used it and I had it lying around for about three months before I even had a chance to try and use it because it's one of those things where I'll buy a product like the, um, the V200 TG Thermal Take case. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do a review on that next. But then another idea comes to mind, and it's a better idea, and I think it's more timely, such as the Neo G Mini uh, thing that the Sickness th th warned me about. So I end up getting that and bringing it in and doing the review on that, and then doing two videos which take, you know, three weeks to sort out all in all. Uh, and then I end up not getting around to reviewing the V200 TG. And, hmm. Anyway, shouldn't it turn on? It should want to hit the power button. Which it did. No, this, it is running on SSD. I'm not running on a hard disk drive. <laughs> there you go. I'll bring the exposure. Ah! There you go. It's not very well thing, but right. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tilt. Actually, why do I do this to myself? I go to monitor. No. I'm just going to tilt this up, sort out the password crap, and then get back to it. There'll be a reflection now in some glass of some sort of whatever, and it's turned. It's just resumed what it was doing before. So that's cool. Sorry for the jarring changes in scene. I apologize. Wide range of exposure on these cameras, though, so very well done, Logitech. Exposure, sorry, um, focus values. Very good. <sighs> on the top right camera. Ah, oh, balls. Yeah, well. I will change the password. Well, at least it was kind of a blah, So, I don't know, somebody will, uh, will end up finding it. See, I'm looking at two screens. I'm looking at one on the left and one on the right, and the one on the right has the camera on it. Eh. Uh, top right, how do you type in? Oh, uh, well. Okay. Well, it's not like I use that password for anything else anyway, so it's really no problem. Right. Nine people are watching. Oh, my God. So now nine people know how to get into my laptop. Wasn't planning on hacking me anyways. Cheers, man. Okay, let's get cracking with some... Has anyone noticed this stuff as well? Oh, I can't bother even trying to zoom in. But there's, um, on, I, I think I had a Windows update, and on the files now, and like on, on random stuff, in the shortcut, there's now like two arrows that point in the corner. And I don't know where the hell it's come from. And I presume it's an update, but I don't know why. I have no idea why. Okay, let's get ourselves some MSI going. 
and let's also get ourselves some Prom95, which is in my downloads folder. Do, 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 do. Prom95, there you go. Okay, so now we need to get, so combustors on on, uh, prime, on um, MSI Afterburner. We need to get the graph back up. So, right, graph is up on there, ready to type in this one. And we're going to see where we end up. Five minute test. I'm going to double check the battery condition, situation, power options, balanced as before, plugged in on the power, good. Uh, small FFTs, and we hit MSI on first with the afterburner, and then we hit, so this is going to get hot, and it was on manual, uh, it was on an automatic fan. So, that. Okay. We are good to go. So, let us see. And now I need to go into um, build mobile. Yes, okay, good. Yes. And Streamlabs is failing on this profile, so just ignore. And I'll also try and change the um, focus value. To one that's usable, kind of. I can just read off what's going on anyway. So, on CPU temperature, we are at 84 degrees. Has this changed anything? Oh, jeez. I really hope this has changed something now. This would be nice. It should do, because there's less dust in there. We've got thermal paste on that's actually not dry and cracking. And, ugh. Ah, uh, this isn't touchscreen, so... There's no touchscreen capability to this. I have no idea, there's just arrows in the corner. I'm gonna have to dig around and see if I can find some reasons to it. I tried to do a quick search before, didn't find anything. I mean, good news, we're not at 199 degrees yet, but I kind of don't think that it's going to be, I don't know. it be interesting to see if there's any headroom on this fan. It must be running at full speed though. If it's something, if a laptop's at 90 degrees, you should probably be running the fan at full speed. I would have thought. Just dump it in, yeah. Although there has to be a, quite a lot of um, uh, flow, I would have thought, flow rate to maintain that. Uh, okay, I haven't actually been seeing the... I've been seeing the chat box, is like the smallest thing. Where's my chat box? Where's my chat box? There it is. There you go, that's good. That's good. That's way too big though. Okay. Um, let me use some malware. Yeah, I did a malware scan on it and nothing's come up, so... Yeah. Lock doesn't seem to crash and burn. Yeah, I mean, clock, I think, is a, it's at its base clock, I think, of 2400. Or 2500, maybe. But, I mean, yeah, the clock speed went down last time to 1.197 at the minimum. 1.297 generally. Huh, maybe it has the mobile setting screen, yeah. So yeah, so it's it's doing it's got double the clock speed right now, so there's a good improvement on that. But more more than that, it means that the fan shouldn't be active at unreasonable times. So that that'll be much better. It is irritating though, because I use this just for my general run around. Uh, plug it into uh, a TV and watch some uh, watch some Netflix or something on there. Uh, and the last thing you want when just running some fucking Netflix is to have the fan just start going. I just think this is unnecessary. So you have to put it onto um, onto the low power setting or at least a setting that has um, the uh, the power state of the CPU at like 
maximum zero, minimum zero, or maximum 100, minimum zero, and it'll just lump it down. Um, but yeah, I mean, so this is considerably better. I mean, because we're looking at 50 degrees, uh, 50, 59 seconds left, or 49 seconds left, and we're still not at the 99 degree mark. I mean, I mean that's, I know that's ridiculous in itself, but it's still kind of okay. GPU is doing, uh, GPU was 91 before, it's now 89. So I think the temperatures are pretty much okay as they were before. The GPU um, uh, thermal paste was in better condition. Um, so it was probably getting the same, roughly the same um, um, stuff as it was before. I mean, yeah, let's, let's get in some, um, let's get in some um, uh, liquid metal and see what happens then. But really, this thermal solution on this is so small. It, you know, what do we got? Ninety-seven. Three seconds left. And pause. So we did hit ninety-eight degrees. So we have one degree improvement, and I'm trying to type like on there. Oh yeah, let's stop the tests as well because actually before we do that, I want to see. Okay, no, there wasn't any more limb, any more room. I just turned it off and it was like, well, there's no load now, so we can go to nothing. And then it realised, oh no, we're still really freaking hot, so we need to turn it back on. Okay, so let's get the stats out. That was a much more gradual increase, so that's nice. Uh, degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Oh, would I long for degrees, uh, degrees Fahrenheit to be true on this? Uh, do, 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 do. 90, so we got 98. Uh, GPU temperature, apologies for that. In fact, why don't I just, why do I do this? Why do I do this to myself? Desk mobile. Or monitor desk. Or monitor desk and mobile. Ah! Okay. Um, so that was 90, uh, 97, no, 98 on that. Uh, we got to 89, so that's a two degree improvement, which is uh, ambient. What was ambient? I know I'm doing it way too bad. I'm running around like an idiot when I normally do a thermal testing. Uh, 22.9, so that's a 0 0.2 degree Celsius drop. Uh, 22.9. 9. CPU clock though. Uh, da, 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 da. CPU clock was why why can't I just uh, brain please help me okay went down to as low as two one nine five two point one nine five and then the GPU clock was uh, one point oh nine seven okay so if I knock that. I'm going to insert, um, uh, insert table above, a row above. Then we're going to do this. We're going to copy that down. We're going to shift those to, I oh, know we need that, that. Okay. Then we need that is. That, that, okay. Pretty sure there's a better way of doing this. But... It's only a temporary graph as well, so I'm not going to get too wound up about it either ways. And then we can throw, I think we need to throw that there. Um... So that's that. So really, in terms of, of thermals, we, we sort of didn't really gain much of anything. I mean, this one is, we need to do, that one is, um, after, and then this one's before. Okay, so that's that. I'm not going to make this into a real graph. So after we gained... 0 0.8, 0 0.7 degrees, or 0 0.8 degrees, uh, and then we gained a degree, one and a half degrees on the on the GPU. So, eh, 
but the clock is what we really had here. All right, dude. Catch you next time. Hello to the sickness's wife. I won't say names. Technically, I could boil water on this laptop. At least in it. But then I'd be in all sorts of other bits of trouble. Uh, okay, but no, the, the real difference, so was the clock speed, which... There you go. So, so before we were at 1.19, and now we're at 2.19. So, clearly, an entire gigahertz of improvement is what was doing that. So, the lesson is, if you're having some thermal problems with your laptop, the likelihood is, is it's going to be also affecting... Uh, let's see, um, yeah, yeah. desk, let's take the mobile away. It's probably going to be also affecting your clock speed, which if you keep an eye on, you'll probably see the clock speed drop. And then all you need to do is crack the laptop open if it's outside your warranty and change the thermal paste, which is to cost you about, um, I don't know, three pounds probably for just a small tube of it. Um, and that'll probably last you in terms of laptop applications, probably five or six applications. In fact, no, with a full tube. I mean, honestly, I'm thinking in terms of um, the ones you get with CPU coolers, but with a full tube of it, you probably last about 20 applications, so you'll be good for the next rest of your life, probably. Temper of temper time was way better, and that's the thing for me. It's not having... Because I can't change the fan speed on here, and frankly, with the, with the big issues with the CPU thermal paste, then I, I wouldn't want to change it either way. I'd need the cooling to happen, but now... Because I can't change, even if it was good thermal paste or it was okay, I, I can't because I can't change fan speed. The only thing I can do is change the thermal paste. So if the thermal paste was completely fine in there and this made no difference, I'd be very tempted just to get some uh, some liquid metal and just throw it on there um, and you know try that out um, very gingerly to see if I can improve it that way. Because you know, otherwise, you you know. Eh. You're going to be struggling. I mean, I'm not even sure the validity of using liquid metal in a laptop though. Because liquid metal, the idea is liquid metal is liquid metal. It's, well, no, liquid metal. So it's, it stays in a liquid state, uh, which keeps the thermal conductivity high. But it also means that because it's a liquid state, I mean, if you bashed it around much, would it move position? Would it go out of place? Would it, you know, then cause other problems than that uh, and actually stop being very thermally efficient or effective? Uh, I don't know. But saying that, we do stick it on motherboards that are mounted vertically, so it could also drop in that sense. So... I don't think it's actually a problem. Um, uh, do, 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 uh, yeah, you are uh, technically kind of correct, yes. The difficulty is that if, if the thermal paste was so bad that, yeah, sorry, due to chef, I'll just read it anyway. The thermal paste is always the same because no matter how clean the CPU cooler, uh, the cooler is, the fan is always going to activate at the same temperature, so we'll always be on like that on, on this fan mode. No, you are entirely correct. And then this is exactly why I remove the um, I remove the fan speed, but it doesn't take into account the whole story. Because let's say that the, uh, the thermal paste was um, buggered to a point where it was doing absolutely nothing, then it would just hit. You would see that the the um, the fan curve would go much steeper, which you probably already are fully aware of. Um, but the result at the end, depending on the improvement, could be the same. Uh, now, it turns out that the thermal paste before clearly wasn't doing that bad of a job, but it was also dropping the clock speed like hell. But on the other hand, if the thermal paste, if I got some liquid metal and threw liquid metal on here, the likelihood is I'd probably drop another 10 degrees or so, uh, and then it wouldn't, the fan wouldn't even need to get an active at that point because the, um, the transfer was so quick just from the material itself. Uh, could be the situation. Um, but yeah. But, I mean, this is a thing. Like, for me, I'm not super knowledgeable about this stuff. I just do some testing, come up with some um, theories. And and the more testing I do, and the more testing we do, uh, the more we know. And the more testing other people do, the more other people know. And then we all learn together. So then we get to a point where we know, relatively speaking, what the best move is. And then you have people who have watched a million videos, um, but haven't actually done anything themselves, start telling people how um, things work which to a certain degree works, but you can never really um, validate something unless you've kind of done it yourself. Um, so yeah, it's always, you know, it's always cool to do this stuff though. So yeah, so I mean, that was really awesome. So um, I don't know if it's, whether it's worth doing something like, I mean, let's, 
there's all sorts of crap that I've got that I would like to say, hey, guys, this is something that's coming up, but I'm not sure. Okay, let's, um, quick questions to go out to everybody, uh, just, just to see what's what. Uh, what's with run three? What's with run three? Oh yeah, I've still got this on. Huh, that's not good. Run three. Okay, I may as well run through this then. Um, run three would be normally if I do... Now, I don't really do it with, uh, with um, Pro 95 because Pro 95 is such a sort of... The test goes on for so long and it's so consistent that doing three runs of that test really isn't doesn't make a lot of sense. So generally with Pro 95 and Fermark, I'll do a one test run with it because it's just maximum thermals on everything. But with everything else, what I do is I'll throw in... Um, frames per second, um, so I'll do my run one, run two, run three. It'll come out with an average at the bottom like you see here. The average ends up over here, which as I had it before, they were down here. And let's bring that over here. So yeah, so it brings the average there. And then I take this average, the average of the uh, GPU clock, CPU clock, ambient, GPU temp, and CPU temp. I log these into, so these aren't, um, Delta T's yet because the, it's going to take that into account. So I copy these figures and those figures across into a main graph, which let's see if I got the main graph open now. Uh, is this uh, thermal yeah, yeah. So this is the main graph. There you go. So I have my experimental stuff. So I copy all that information into here. So I've got my uh, case volume there, but I got CPU, GPU, um, and then the clocks. So there's my clocks. And then these graphs come out. Those get copied into a PowerPoint. But I do that for Prime 95, Combustor, um, Firestrike. I've actually split all these up individually since I had them before. And that's something I was working on this week as well. Um, it's actually great having some time doing that rapid fire review. I had time to work that out. I needed to give that more time than it would have otherwise. But this also means that, you know, I can do stuff like this. Stuff that needs to be done. Um, but then this also goes through into a... Um, my air cooling graph there. So update links, and then I take these, and then there is a, a sort of um, um, a, tra a translucent background here, which then I play the um, the benchmark footage through when it comes to the actual um, thing. So I've got all this set up here. But one thing is annoying is that this gets lost every time. The bottom of the sentence gets lost every time. So I have to go across because I think if it's too long, it just doesn't like to hold the information. So every single time I have to pop back into my case testing, go all the way back to official Pro 95 and recopy the suffix case name and or the cooler name or whatever it is, which is just a big pain in the butt. So yeah, so that's that. I mean, that was quite a cool little test. I quite enjoyed doing that. I was trying to average the CPU clock. Oh, so average CPU clock was it? Well, whatever. It's not right. Okay. Cool. So that's that. And that's that. That's that. I don't need to save that. So that's annoying. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, let's see. If I go to build desk, whatever. Uh, I saw so organized, and I don't even know which button to click on my stream deck. Um, that one, which makes no difference to anyone. So uh, the question is, okay, actually, no, let's go back to PC monitor. The question is, guys, 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 is I also have in here my buy list. No. Eh. Okay, let me go find it. Let me go find it because this is something I do, and it's also it's always cool to just see, uh, to have people's names logged down on things. Uh, YouTube, uh, buy and sell, buy... And then cases list. Okay, this is the graph. This is the graph. These are all of the um, things I've got sort of logged down, ready for sort of reviews I want to do. Everything crossed out, minus a couple things I haven't logged onto the system. Everything um, uh, super scripted um, or strike through, not super scripted, um, is is something I've already done. Uh, but I've got stuff that I want to look into um, and that sort of stuff. And I will also log down. Who recommends these things? Although uh, the sickness was not said, was not mentioned in the video. I think you might I meant, might have mentioned him in the video, but not specifically for that. Um, but the sickness hasn't been mentioned for actually a couple of things because um, I just run my head just melts when it comes to the end of the video. So I just sort of, but I need to stay on top of this uh, and give people their dues. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, uh, the Reatorum Morpheus was an interesting one because Ben Cross mentioned the Reatorum Mor Morpheus, which was that case that could be built into different things, which looked really interesting, and I really want. I was interested to check out that out. In terms of a reviewing standpoint, that looks really interesting to check out. From t from a consumer standpoint, I think there's too many eggs being juggled or something. I don't know. Uh, there's too many uh, things going on there to make one or each individual um, result of that construction. I don't know. Uh, successful, I guess. Uh, let me actually see if I can get. Have I lost? Have I lost this? Okay, let's go on to uh, Rio Toro Morpheus. So I was typing mouse. No, I didn't. Rio Toro Morpheus. There we go. Let's just stretch that out. So we have a semi decent view. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Rio Toro Morpheus. The idea of this case is, and I can't see chat. Yes, I can. Um, You've, got your, you've always got your title. CIO. So this is the Reator Morpheus. The idea is that you can build it up into something or, or you know, build it up into something like an AT, ATX or an EATX or something. Um, I don't know what the two combinations are. I think it's ATX and micro ATX. Um, actually, when it converts, oh, what's the case? Morpheus can be built uh, be built as short what Morpheus can be built as short micro ATX and when you want to add second GP add a second GPU audio card or more storage Morpheus can easily sh shape shift into full size ATX Morpheus can be built as short uh, they need an A in that uh, but yeah so the idea is that it can be constructed as something like a nice miniature micro ATX but here's the thing. Here's the problem with that, or kind of the problem. I get, I, I understand, okay, I understand that if you want to expand in the future, then you can extend it. And on a standpoint, this thing looks to be, you know, built like a colander. It's full of holes, which, not in terms of its, like, not, not it's full of holes, literally. It's just, have they got a thing in here that's got, yeah. So everything's a grill on this thing. Open new tab. Does that give me a big image? Yeah, everything's a grill in this sort of thing, which is interesting. Great for thermals, but also it's confusing. And I also have a, I also have a, an inkling that you're gonna end up having just a lot of spare hardware that you don't know what to do with. That that's the idea of the expansion. Although they do look like they've nailed uh, the. Um, the cable management, though. Cable management looks beautiful. Loads of it there. If I open that in new tabs, that's going to give me a big... No. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. Cool idea. But I have a feeling that, that it's basically... It's basically a sort of jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none situation, maybe. But I suppose I'd have to review it to know for sure. But yeah. Ah. Oh. But anyway, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Also, I need to work out some prototyping for a design for um, a DIY case because that's something I've been on my mind for a while. Um, uh, my computer is uh, in a cardboard box under my bed. What? It, what? <laughs> is... Oh, um, uh, hmm. Um... This is literally in a cardboard box under your bed. Uh, uh, one thing that I might be able to do, in fact, let me just double check this because I mean, I mean, how many of you guys are in chat? There's six of you guys in chat. What I might do is throw up a, just give you a little bit. If anybody is following, and you should do if you're in this chat now, you should be on the Discord. You should get yourself on Discord and have a chat with everybody who wants to chat all sorts of stuff. We got loads, you know, people joining every now and then. Now, actually, back up to this thing here. This is an image that I teased of a project that I'm doing in the um, in the next few weeks. So yes, yeah, Judo Shaft. Oh yeah, I know you're already there. You are here, Judo Sheep. Is that your thing? You just you just have a you Judo something, and you have a like a 
you see what what sort of comes up with you. Um, this comes up nicely tonight. It could be interesting. Um, hey, I spent a lot of time. No, I'm just um, I, I presume you're on about the Morpheus. Yeah, I. I just think that when you try to be everything, you end up like it's like when you try to please everyone, you end up inherently pleasing no one. You know, um, although when you, or when you try to make everyone 100% happy, you end up, you know, not making everyone 100% happy because you can't make everyone 100% happy 100% of the time. That's the whole, you know, saying, as the saying goes. Um, I just not satisfied with the status quo. But what is the status quo? What is normal? I mean, when you have mini ITX cases, micro ATX cases, ATX cases, EATX cases, tempered glass, uh, tempered glass mid range, tempered glass premium, um, tempered glass budget, and when you've got standard panel budget, when you've got um, standard panel premium, when you've got acoustic cases, when you've got, you know, the thermally optimized cases, when you've got um, aesthetically optimized cases, what is the status quo when all of that is going on? There isn't a status quo. The status quo doesn't exist. This case is trying to assume that there is some sort of status quo and invent something that doesn't really need to be invented. Because here's the fun thing about some micro ATX cases. You can throw in eight three and a half inch drives and it might not be all that much bigger than this unit once you've got it into its micro ATX case load a mode. It looks like quite a large unit and it doesn't look like there's a lot of fan mounting opportunities inside the case itself. It looks way too complicated and doesn't look like it's supplying a lot more although let's double check and see what kind of fan mounting positions we've got what we've we got okay okay so we've got a lot of fan mounting actually so there is a lot of potential here so it looks like this is going to be a great case for cooling amazing case for cooling it's going to be marmite on the on the aesthetics. Each person's going to have their own opinion uh, in terms of radiators. Then, so you've got uh, one radiator. So in mid metal cooling options, metal cooling options. What? I think they were supposed to say ATX cooling options. And am I am I missing something here? It just says the same thing. Micro ATX and ATX. I'm going to assume. Why is it whenever we look at a, a, a manufacturer's website, the marketing team has done something wrong, and you have to, and you, it just looks confusing. But to be honest, I jump the gun on everything, so hence half of my previous like earlier videos and some of my sort of mid videos of me year back or not even that long ago uh, actually jump the gun on a few things and say this is terrible when it actually isn't all that bad, but it is still bad. Anyway, so yeah, it's got a lot of cooling options. I think it's really interesting. But I also have my, and it looks like amazing for cable management, it has to be said. It looks fantastic for cable management. I've got my drawbacks on this. And I hate it when marketing teams use, use terms like um, status quo. When, I mean, yeah. Every, well, so many cases are similar, but so many are different. So, yeah. Oh. I mean, I've personally never been bogged down by the status quo. I like Rio Toro's CR280. That's a really cool case. I love that case. It was fantastic. I thought it was amazing because it was just, I mean, I want I want tempered glass on this. But, you know, other than that, I don't see a problem. The front panel was fiddly as hell. But it was one of those cases that was, it's a budget case. It was about £40. I think you can get it for a bit cheaper. But uh, it didn't have tempered glass, so it doesn't rival things like the um, Masterbox Lite um, 3.1 tempered glass. Um, but it's really interesting. And to me, it just looks like it's got a load of character. And I really enjoyed the build. The strip on the side wasn't as, you know, wasn't very sort of uh, high quality. It was just some like plasticky, papery film that went around the outside. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Nice website, though. Um, maybe just try to emphasize that they do something different. Many others just follow the trends. I think I think I definitely agree that they've done something different. I agree they've done something different. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think when you're gonna make up when you're gonna make a uh, uh, when you're gonna make a shout out and say that everything else is the status quo or, or there's or pretty much everything else is a status quo. You just kind of define what that is, but obviously marketing teams, you know, don't don't do more than just sort of taglines and stuff. Um, 
sign is the first of many convertible designs. Is this seriously the first convertible case? Is this really the first convertible case? My favorite case is the Cooler Master one with the with um, all holes over it. Ugh. With all also holes all over the place and the glass panel. Uh, you uh, you revive built in, in it for future frame. Um, which one was that? I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting, but. Q300L was that yeah. It didn't have glass though. <sighs> to me, it just looks like a colander, and that's just like plastic glass. Yeah, plexiglass. Yeah, probably the Q300L. Interesting case, but I think I was throwing too much into it, more than it could actually handle. But the breakout slots. The breakout slots. Cool, that's one. The breakout slots. I'm lost. Am I lost? I don't know. Probably. But yeah, no, this just, yeah, it looks a bit colandery like. Um, but anyway, so just out of curiosity then, uh, does anybody want, I don't know, I'll, let me let me just load it up and see if, if it's worth showing uh, any sort of teasers of home stuff. Uh, let's see, overflow archive, and sketch up, available timber, might actually be getting a custom bracket designed for this, which uh, a friend's company is going to, might be able to do something with. <laughs> right, let's see. Okay. Okay, is there stuff? I'm going to hide some things in this. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is getting... Uh, this is going to be fun for me. But maybe not so fun for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's hide that. And we're going to hide this. I'm probably showing stuff on a different screen, but we'll see. Hide that. Okay. So we'll just hide that as well. Right. So this is. Uh, yes, check the air had breakout PCI uh, covers. Did it? Oh, did it really have breakout PCI covers? Uh, Thanks, quality video videos. Just found a case. Um, not everyone because of you. Which one was it? Which was the case? Which was the case? I want to know. This is Survival of the Fittest. This is the project. This is all of my original materials. These are all of the panels I have acquired. This was an IKEA case. IKEA, IKEA shelving unit. These here are IKEA shelving units. This here are panels that I... Uh, this is the, the top of a table that I found from the dump, which I took back in my car. And I have a um, Toyota IQ. So that was an interesting trip, trying to get this back in the car. Uh, it was, what is it? 800 by 1200. So that was a bit awkward getting in the car, but it was in pieces. And this is a pile of aluminium trim. 25 by 25 by 2 millimeter aluminium trim. This is for edge protection. The sickness knows exactly what I'm talking about apart from what the hell this actually is. This was actually me working out the edge protection to work out how many I've got and work out my cuts. Sorry for the laziness here, I'm just being... So I work out all my cuts, so I've got my cuts for all the main bits there, and then these longer bits are for the sides there, and then there's some shorter bits at the edges there. These are all the panels and stuff. So the idea is that I'm going to have... Actually, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So... The idea was that I was going to have, these were going to be um, all these things, these bolts and these um, uh, inset things, these threaded inserts. Those were going to be for uh, aesthetic um, 
fixings so it would hold all of these um, panels on because I might want to take panels off of this on the future to do maintenance and stuff uh, and to check out things, maybe reorganize things a little bit. Uh, and then all these ones are structural. So these are all these inserts are structural. There's about 40 in total, 46 in total. Um, so those are all those parts. And yeah, these this panel here then, so that panel in itself is one unit. So once I unscrew the bolts and the inserts come off there, uh, stay in the timber, then I can remove it. And yeah, same for the other side. This side here then is a completely structural carcass. So that's going to be made out of the table. So all you can see the colors match. So the table is going to make the structural carcass. Um, there you go, around there. Uh, I am going to be getting some sort of bracket in the center that will be able to act as a brace. But if I don't get something like that, then I will be, um, I will be uh, propping the insides here with some bracing just to make sure that there's no, uh, like, if I, like, fall or sit on it, then it doesn't end up, like, I don't know, bowing over. Uh, and, yeah, and then I have here some um, things. Not all the things, but some things. I also have some more holes to cut and some more uh, aluminium to put in places. So that is pretty much... Oh, yeah, and then there's also this thing at the bottom, which is not all it seems to be. It's actually something, it's an incomplete model of something that I couldn't be bothered to complete because it has no bearing on me actually designing this thing. Um, but yeah, and all of this trim here was so I didn't have to do miters and crap because frankly, I found the miter all together and the miter all of the trim and stuff. Oh, forget it. So anyway, yes, that's that. So that is... The upcoming, do I count as a watch? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is the upcoming thing. So if anybody in the Discord would like to throw guesses out and stuff, again, if you're not joining the Discord, join the Discord. It's fantastic. We chat about all sorts of random stuff. And you can always help me when I've got a question and I need some help. I end up just talking about random stuff that I you know, have ideas about. Um, suggestions, if you want to suggest stuff. Hardware discussions, which is taking a while to load. I've not chatted about hardware in a while. That, that question was around quite a while back. But anyway, yeah, so we got all sorts of crap in there. Um, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, so join Discord if you want to join Discord. This is SketchUp, yeah. Yeah. Um, don't really use SketchUp much more nowadays, but I used to use it quite a bit. Oh, Aerocool QS240. I Do I still have that? I'm not sure if I still have that. Um, Aircool QS240. That was... I was looking at the Co, uh, the Co-Link satellite and the Ryzen Tech sticks. The, right, yeah, Ryzen Tech. I, I was looking at the name, and I quite like the look of the name, but it's hard to say. Um, but anyway, um, uh, but Aircool seemed most sensible for, for my use. The Aircool build, it was a surprising build. It, I like budget cases when they, come, when they turn out to be really quite interesting because it just... It's... It's way more fun to build in something that is surprisingly good uh, rather than something that is that you have high expectations of and turns out to be lower than those expectations because that is like pretty much just being disappointed. Uh, do, 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 do. I haven't used Fusion three sixty. I did want I did want to do a bit of Blender. I do kind of want to do a bit of Blender for some you know to have a bit of fun with that. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I've not used Fusion. See, I um, I use this. Uh, how many years ago now? Uh, no, let me see. Let me have a look. Um, December. Uh, no, um, 2018. Uh, so, um, three years ago. Then five. No, three. Three years ago. Then another three, six, seven, eight. I started using this eight years ago, and. I was using it because it was free software that was available in our school um, to do stuff with like uh, DT projects and stuff like that. Um, oh yeah, that was a that was a really good um, that was a really good model that, um, that I ended up doing. That was interesting. Oh yeah, that was cool as well. It's all random. Uh, save changes to available timber. New. No. Yeah, like I like you can do random. It's quite fun doing this sort of crap. Um, uh, this was a, a friend who needed a bit of. Um, assistance doing a, uh, a sort of project um, for uh, for so it's kind of kind of like um, 
not like a, a charity project, but um, I don't know. Um, I, it's, just, it's just a project he had to do for some sort of uh, organization. Which, um, and yeah, he was just working out all of all the timbers and all of the stuff he needed to make f- um, three wardrobes. Or well, three wardrobes, three um, um, storage cupboards. And yeah, and then we had to work out... Uh, it was like one in the morning when we were doing this, trying to work out what the freaking cuts were. You know, trying to work out, oh, okay, uh, how much can we get out of the available timber sizes he has to hand and stuff. And that was quite cool. Um, but yeah, no, I really do like the software. I've also got some other random crap that I've got lying around. Uh, what other one have I got? Uh, tech videos. Let's see. Um, archive. And I need to search for... What the hell is the thing called? Um... It's a Fantax case. Fantax, water cool, sketch up, models, uh, rule, sketch up. Oh yeah, that oh that was cool. Yeah, I made some um oh. Let's see if I can get the actual models open. Uh do 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 do. I've actually not got the uh model. I don't know what that was. I heard something on here. I never heard that sound before. Oh. Um, really, have I not got this saved? What is this? Oh, I think somebody bought a case on eBay. Or something. I should turn that on silent. Because I'm waiting to sell the Neo G Mini. Oh, that's cool. Right, let's let's just turn the sound off on that. Apologies, everyone. Uh, Fantex, water cool, uh, SketchUp, model, guide stuff. Where is that gone? I am so freaking confused. SketchUp model. Huh. Anyway, no, I did this uh, SketchUp build, which was basically the, a replication of the um, of the Fantex M2 Evolve Micro ATX. And I just ran around with a micrometer, just doing that, which was really quite interesting. Uh, and yeah, and I ended up like covering all of like the PCI Express slot covers. They all got modeled in their own individual things. I was running around like an absolute mentalist, trying to... Um, trying to build this thing up it was a really freaking cool project so i mean we ended up covering um i ended up covering the um like the even like the led like like diffusion bracket thing at the front i i spent like three weeks after work like three weeks on this thing it was really cool i really enjoyed doing it uh but yeah just all the holes were cut out and all that sort of stuff and yeah the detail it was so cool like yeah sketchup is a really really awesome program and uh, definitely worth uh a three D modeling, I think, is just definitely um, something that people should kind of have a look on. But to be honest, I think um, if you're going to get into anything these days, so it should be IT. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. SketchUp is really bad on the um, on like a millimeter so by millimeter point of view on that project for the uh, for the thing, 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 thing. Fantex Enter Evolve MATX. I was really struggling when it came down to things that were less than a millimeter, and that was it was just a really freaking awkward. Like a radius that was like two millimeter radius of something was getting a little bit painful to work with, um, or well, no, one millimeter radius or smaller was just getting really painful to work with. So yeah, it's like it's like um, it's like um, the difference between like AutoCAD and uh, Bentley, which is whatever the thing uh, is. Um, I don't really use AutoCAD or Bentley um, MicroStation, but you know you'll have like certain projects will use like MicroStation because it's got uh, it's got a finer level of detail or resolution um, than uh, than something like AutoCAD does. Um, but I use Revit for my day to day stuff, so I don't use I don't use SketchUp or AutoCAD, so <laughs> I don't want to talk about. Uh, Oh wow, wasn't it? Was that a? Ugh. Oh, that's incredible! Thank you very much, uh, Slatzer. Oh, thank you very much. That's really no, much appreciated. That's awesome. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's crazy. You didn't watch specific vid. Um, 
yeah that, yeah that's a that's a, a while back um but i did like i did a small video on um i did a small video on the or a small video i did a video on the um blah, 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 on the sketch model itself but then i did a video afterwards about teaching people how to use sketchup so that they can understand how to manipulate that that model in the way they wanted to um but in all honesty that's like the worst way to go around um, and what's worse than that is only a few months afterwards the tempered glass version of the case came out so it kind of made the whole uh model a bit void and i wasn't going to remodel that because trying to like you may as well start from scratch with that sort of thing rather than trying to edit anywhere else but yeah uh do 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 um yeah th that's something i'd like to do in the future is have a 3d printer i actually um oh there's a thing have i got bear with me bear with me bear with me, bear with me. no i haven't got it i don't think i don't have to anyway i actually purchased I purchased a uh, 3D printed um, component for this up to upcoming project I'm doing. And it's a little bracket for this module that doesn't really mount very well otherwise. But I'm going to try and incorporate that into the into the build. That should be really cool. But I had a 3D printed one of those. And I really would like to get a 3D printer, 3D printer at some point. But God, how much do those things cost? You can get them as low as like 300, can't you, for a half decent one? But even then, it's expensive. Hell, I can't afford to uh, just blow three hundred pounds on um on a three D printer. I'll probably use once in a blue moon. Um, but yeah, it would only cost like a couple of quid as well for the, these little three D printed things. And uh, yeah, uh, just free shipping as well on eBay, which is fantastic. Three hundred for a decent one. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm gonna be getting one of those anytime soon. Um, because like, I mean, I spend you know I spend more than enough, I think, in other respects than uh, try trying to um. Yeah, why have I got this up as well? That's so uninteresting. Uh, I'll throw this over here. Uh, there you go. But yeah, no, so um, I spend more than enough on other stuff. And donations, like $2 every now and then, is fantastic because it does keep the channel running. So again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Slatter, thank you very much because that's really appreciated. And people who join the Patreon and stuff and that sort of stuff, it keeps things taking over as well. I mean, I think it was like sixteen dollars a month, which adding that to the, um, I think I think we're up to because of like the Christmas extra advertising and stuff like that. Uh, we're up to something like ninety dollars or something a month, which will probably die down to like fifty by the time Christmas advertising's gone. But I mean, that's ninety dollars, which is really awesome. So it means that I mean, I'm getting like a hundred dollars a month now, um, which doesn't quite, you know. I mean, uh, if, let's say uh, if I work one day at like my workplace, then I'll probably have like fifty pounds um, in the one day. So, a hundred dollars for about at least thirty hours a week of work doesn't really work out very well in terms of you know work to you know monetary sort of compensation thing. You know, ideally, I'd be work, I'd be earning fifty dollars a day to keep things consistent, and that would just be to to maintain uh, the status quo. Yeah, from using the term that um, Rachel has have used uh, with my income. So yeah. yeah. Also, every kilo is twenty to thirty bucks. Jesus. Uh, you really use more than you could think of uh, if you don't have one. Uh, you really use more than you could think of uh, if you don't have one. I'm trying to work out my brain's slow and tired <laughs> i can't work out what that sentence meant <laughs> oh sorry um but yeah but actually i don't think i'm gonna be doing a break because i frankly i think i'm gonna be wrapping up in the next 10 minutes or so but if anyone has any suggestions or they have anything they want to say uh and just have a little conversation about uh or if they've seen something in the tech news that they'd like me to take a look at not necessarily like you know intel did this or whatever because frankly my insight on that is pointless but if they saw some case come out or some cooler or some news in those regards to stuff that i may be covering in the future i am going to be compiling a calendar for uh, launch dates to certain things and setting reminders for myself to you know keep on uh, an eye on certain things um 
um, with regards to PC case and stuff release stuff. I would love to at some point uh, go to like a, um, I mean, a CES or something um, like that and just do some of my own coverage of that sort of stuff. That would be really fun. I don't think that's going to be at least in the next two years. So let, we won't get too far ahead of ourselves. But yeah, that would be that would be cool. Um, that was quite cool actually having it. It's like a shadow gap. It's like a shadow gap above my keyboard. It's actually a better way of having a keyboard as well. Have it elevated, not having your palms rest on there because then you would end up just having pressure on there and that sort of thing. I was interested in getting one of those keyboards actually that was like sort of like that. But I need to get better at typing first before I can actually slide, um, sort of knock it sideways. And I just realised that nobody can see anything that I'm talking about because I'm actually not... I was, I was, I was doing that. And I saw the other screen there, and it made no sense. Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, PC monitor and desk. Is that what I wanted? Yeah, it was. I wanted that. So, uh, for, forget it. Forget it. I tried. I tried. Um, hmm. So, yeah. So, I think that's that. Let's actually... There's a good shout. Is there anything... I've got the... Hmm. Okay, so, okay. I'm going to be doing a wrap-up video then. I mentioned it earlier, but maybe some people have jumped out, jumped in, and that sort of stuff. Um, let me just double-check what we're looking at. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to be doing a sort of end-of-year uh, end of, end of uh, video on CS 2019 06 01. So, is 06 01, is that June or is that January? I don't know when. I literally just do not keep track of this stuff. I'm so bad with it. CS. January. It's January, is it? Oh, let's not go to that. <laughs> Am I CES ready? Well, what we'll be doing is analysing some things um, about CES and working out what we're going to potentially take a look at in the future. I'm going to keep my eye on CES this year. Those speakers. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're gonna yeah keep our eye on that and see what what comes up. Um, but yeah, so what I need to do is actually I need to troll through uh, archive. So is this here, these are um, in two thousand and eighteen, including little announcement videos. We've made sixty four different videos. A few of those, probably about fifteen of those. Are just some um, just some sort of throwaway videos. Um, so let's say we've made fifty videos in the last um, in in this year. So what I need to do is distinguish. So Ryzen Tech sticks, Aerocool QS two forty. Um, then I got the like Cryorig M nine. I'm gonna do a bit of a wrap up video and do a bit of a um, what was what were my favorite cases and my least favorite out of the ones I reviewed in that year. What were my favorite uh, CPU coolers and my least favorite ones out of the ones I reviewed in that year, or best and worst ones in my opinion of uh, of, of that year. Um, and yeah, and then see what's what from there. Um, I think that'll be really interesting to go through. So maybe quite a Dark Rock Four H Five Universal. Uh, there aren't really that many cases to be honest. Uh, what have we got? The Ryzen Tech Sticks, the Aero Cool QS Two Forty. Um, we did. Rio Toro CR280. Where is the... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Huh, because they're in 2017 then. It was... Um... Alright, there really aren't that many. See, the thing is, is that if I only if I can only create, like, um, a proper review video every two weeks, or three weeks, to be honest, because lots of crap happens in the middle I need to sort out, and I make little videos in between then it means I can only really review 20 different things properly, thoroughly, you know, all, all out, um, which is a bit difficult. I mean, even doing my rapid fire review, it means I've got to spend three days. Uh, I've got to spend my first night then will be doing the recordings. This will be an after work thing. Uh, have I got the right thing? Then? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing after work recording. Uh, so I'll start at something like um, uh, 6 p.m. After I get home from work, I work 9 till 5.30 get home 6 p.m. start recording that recording then will be going um i'll do all the unboxing and crap like that for a rapid fire um and then mounting it to the uh to the board 
mounting it to the, the rear test rig. And then once I've done the uh, mounting on there, then I may be able to get some testing done in that one night, but I might have to leave um, the rest of the testing to the other night. Most likely is I'll have all the testing done on the second night, uh, and then I'll compile all the footage together and do a rough cut uh, after I've done the testing. But the testing takes a long time because I've got to do three tests uh, of each one. So it takes probably about an hour or so to do each run. So it takes about three to four hours to do all the testing for one thing. So then, yeah, by the time I've done all that and taken all the footage and compiled it into all of the various folders I need to put it into, then I've sort of ran out of my second night then. So the third night then becomes a rush together of an edit, some sort of vague script, and you know finalize it all together basically and i might be able to get one done in three evenings but then that means it's still half a week that's gone into that one video so i'd probably be able to get two rapid fire reviews done in a week so that's not a lot you know and that's i mean that's the whole that's what happens when you uh that's what happens when you do this during you know your working normal working week you just don't get much done in comparison to lots of other channels you just can't get a lot done um but you know, I, I can work more efficiently so i will do my best to do that but we will see but anyway i'm gonna wrap all this up into one video and we'll see what we come up with um I've actually think I've done more cooler videos this this year than I have done case videos and that's a shame i want to do more case videos because case videos are more interesting and they're more fun to do actually i think um Cooler videos, you spend more of your time doing, um, you spend more of your time just doing testing than you do actually doing any, you know, looking at interesting stuff. And I actually kind of think that most of my uh, cooler reviews should be rapid fire reviews. Because what do you need to know about a cooler other than what it looks like? Um, and a few of vlog style rapids. I don't think I'm good enough to do vlog style and make it work well. Because um, I don't think I've got the quality of camera uh, camera equipment to make to pull that off. Now I don't necessarily mean like, you know, having a, like a super expensive camera. This thing can do a lot. Um, but I mean, I would ideally like to have a 4K camera at some point. This is 1080p 60, which was like, about five years ago, this was like, whoa, that's freaking cool. You know, that's amazing. And in fact, maybe even like three or four years ago in terms of YouTube, um, that was really cool to see. Um, maybe three years, probably. Um, but nowadays, that's like, the standard is moving to 4K. So I do need to shift to that. But I also haven't got a very nice stabilizing mount to do like really cool stuff like that. Uh, so I'd have to do something like that. Um, um, do, 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 do. You probably need a basic... Uh, Basic text or list to check off. Um, are we talking? Uh, one thing I was thinking of doing actually with the. Um, one thing I was actually looking into before um, before doing the rapid fire reviews was was um, segmenting it off, and I did do that in the edit. I didn't do it when I was doing the recording. I recorded pretty much everything as I would normally do it, but I cut down cut it down by about two thirds or about a third to give it two thirds of what I'd normally do. Um, and I was looking to do like, you know, what does it look like? What, you know, what's the mounting like or whatever. But before I, instead I just decided to record everything and then segment it into my pros and cons. And my script for that was only like 500 words long or something, which was nothing. So yeah, that was interesting. So I might do something like that in the future, but I think, yeah, mm. don't know, don't know. Anyway, I'm just pondering random crap now, so I'm not exactly getting anything done. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's it. I think what I can do is sort of just leave it at that. Now, one thing I actually want to do is present to you. Now, what this is going to do, I'll give, I'll do it for like 30 seconds. I won't do it for longer than that, but yeah, I'm going to present to you my. And I was quite happy when I did this, so this is just indulge me. Um, I did. I made a break thing. So what I'm going to do is hit the break button as if I was going to go and take a break um, and, you know, fill up my drink, pop to the toilet, that sort of stuff as you do in a break. And then this would happen and it would be awesome. And if I went for, for you know, a period of five or six minutes, you may see three of these different things come up. But, you know, um, yeah, just indulge me on this one. For the next 30 seconds, you're going to see B-roll of a random video from in the past and it should be interesting. And it should also cut out my, vo my voice automatically. So I'm going to click this button now and you should see 
something quite interesting. So that was that. I thought that was quite fun. Uh, I created that. It's basically just a repository of random videos that I made and compiled today. Um, so it's just a way of me being able to go take a break and you can actually just, I don't know, um, check out some of the stuff that we've done in the past. Uh, rather, I could I could literally just play videos from the, from the channel on there, but you know, it's just a bit of fun, bit of B-roll. Um, and yeah, that changes every time then. So what I will end up doing is I need to do this a little bit more. Uh, YouTube, uh, graphics, AV, live stream, overlay, uh, do, 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 what do we need? Be all break and then be all videos. So these are the videos I've got so far. So I've got to add another, I think five to those so far. Uh, and I will add these as we go along. So what I can do is just cut down, uh, my timeline into a work area and then just, re and just, um, uh, record that work area by itself and throw it into here. Um, and that should then give me some interesting extra stuff uh, for when I need breaks and stuff. So hopefully, you know, ah, Ben Cross, I don't think I've seen you today. I'm going to literally be shooting off in like not that long. But anyway, that should give, you know, something more interesting than just, I don't know, me hitting the play. Because what I'll do is I'll hit the play add button uh, and I'll also hit the break button uh, at the same time. I'll shoot off and do something. Some people will see ads and then come back to checking out the B-roll footage and stuff. Uh, and then some people won't see ads. So at least they'll have something. And at least they'll know when, um, if there's some music playing in the background from B-roll footage and stuff, they'll know when, you know, when I'm away and when it stops, they'll know when I'm back. Um, so it's just something there. I just want to bring a little bit more quality, as it were, to what I'm doing here. Because I, I do a lot of work. I mean, obviously this doesn't cater to many people caters to like up to nine people sometimes um but with any luck that will increase in the future but i can also do this stuff for um for i mean twitch this is just as valid for twitch so if i wanted to shoot over to twitch and okay there's seven people watching uh, out of as many of, of you guys as you can i would really like your opinion and i would and if uh, and i can always do this on discord afterwards as well um I'm pushing Discord a lot today, but Discord is freaking awesome. It was so cool. Um, and Voxma told me about um, and Voxma told me about uh, Discord. Uh, so super thank you to Voxma who did that. Um, what I want to know is, I this this um, Christmas, I want to have one day, maybe half a day, something like that, at least a, a, a few hours or something, um, of just of not not being particularly too pedantic about anything to do with the channel and I was really interested in doing a let's just play some games let's just you know have a bit of fun and relax a bit play some games and do that sort of thing would anybody be interested at all over the Christmas break so anywhere from the 20 I don't know 23rd through to the 2nd of January would anybody be interested in me doing a live stream and just playing some games for a couple of hours, a few hours, uh, and we can jump in between tech talk. I can jump out of playing games to check out some um, uh, some some tech talk stuff going on, and we can have a little look at all sorts of random stuff. There may be some hints and teasers for CES coming up. We can check that sort of stuff out. Um, but yeah, I would like to do a very relaxed one of those. It would be nice if I could do something like that once a month, but I don't think that's realistic. Um, but again, some people might be interested in checking out some of that kind of content. Um, I'm not sure whether to shift that off onto um, onto Twitch to do to make that very much more about gaming, the gaming side of AV Techie, or maybe leave it on YouTube and just see how people run with it. Obviously, my most of my audience is on YouTube, but most of the gaming audience is over on Twitch, so I could do that. But I would be interested in doing something like that, just because I've I have been an um, and this wouldn't be the only thing we'd do, but I've been not dying to, but really wanting to play uh, a little bit of um, like just Euro Truck Simulator 
uh, play some um, uh, play some World of Tanks stuff. Play just any sort of cool stuff. I got Dirt um, Dirt Rally the other day. I'd want to play some Dirt Rally. I've got the wheel. I've got the gear stick. I've got all that sort of stuff to play around with all this stuff a little bit more interestingly. Um, and yeah, I'd like to do that. So if anybody would be interested in that, then, you know, yeah, I'll throw it onto Discord and see what people be, uh, would be interested in doing something like that on there. Um, and yeah, we'll see what's what there. But anyway, I think that is pretty much it. I don't think there's really much more to, uh, much more to run into. But yeah, so... So yeah, no, I uh, yeah, no, I think I think it would definitely be definitely be fun. Definitely a little bit of uh, fun to, to run with. Um but yeah, people do gaming stuff. It is a bit of a gimmick for channels to do gaming stuff. Oh, I fully appreciate that that is the case. Um but it's definitely more relaxing than doing um than doing constant videos and videos and videos. And yeah, and there, and there is a certain thing to um there is a certain thing to be said about, well, it's you know, this you chose to do this all that sort of stuff. Um but in reality, um, when you when you do the sort of the full time work and you also cram this into it, and you've also got to balance all the other stuff that I mean everybody's got to deal with on top of um, on top of like you know no, you know normal everyday life that sort of stuff the stuff that everybody deals with it just it's sometimes nice to just completely just lay back and just chill a little bit so I'd like to do that uh, and yeah so I will talk about that more close to the date uh, it's now the uh 17th so i'll probably do a little bit of an announcement like that on the weekend maybe and set something up for maybe i don't know uh maybe 26th 27th maybe boxing day just after boxing day um or maybe even friday 28th something like that so anyway yeah that's that um i will throw out a list of games on discord um that i have actually got close to the day and we can all pick on which ones that we want to you know have a little mess around with i've got rocket league um and you know all sorts of various stuff in between there so that's it um but anyway i think i've said my bit i think i've said more than more than enough of my fair share of stuff uh and we will be looking forward to stuff from ces that we will be looking into and checking out uh and we'll also be looking into some gaming stuff and um and all sorts of other tech stuff in the future so anyway uh i will close the stream now and see how that works but anyway yeah oh that didn't work anyway yeah there's the stream Stream and a stream and a stream and a stream and a stream. That's cool. Stream section. Anyway, so uh, thanks for coming out, guys. Thanks for checking this out with me. Uh, I actually need to go to my other random um, thing to stop this uh, stream. I'm not sure whether it's going to stop immediately or stop after I click another button, but we will see. Oh, anyway. Cheers for coming out, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Um, uh, bye, 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 I think. I don't know how I end videos. I never really end videos on a, on a very sort of standard way. I don't know. I would say, see ya. <laughs>